Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, February 29th, 2024. I can't remember the last time I've I've said that. I know my son's basketball trainer is really in his mid-30s, but he just turned nine. Anyway, he's a leap year baby. But I digress. Got a great show for you today. The the Dean Bill Kerlick and the Grand Poobah Mark Porter will join us in a sec here. But first, a little something from our sponsors at Joy Mode. I think I speak for most men when I say we want to have better sex. And for the sake of our partner, we may need to have better sex. The issue is that over-the-counter pills contain unregulated chemicals, suggest unsafe doses, and include the risk of several other health problems. That's why we partnered with our friends over at Joy Mode. Whether you're looking to spice up your intimate moments or increase your confidence in the bedroom, Joy Mode makes all natural and science-backed supplements dedicated to helping men perform better across their core functions. Their trademark product, the Sexual Performance Booster, is every man's solution for increased blood flow, stamina, and performance. It's like a pre-workout, but for sex. All ingredients have been assessed in peer-reviewed journals. All ingredients have been studied and researched in humans. It comes in a palm-sized packet like your favorite electrolyte powder. Simply mix with 68 ounces of water 45 minutes before activity and watch the magic unfold literally. Redefine your intimacy and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with the code BUCKNUTS. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BUCKNUTS at usejoymode.com. Ingredients with integrity. That's joy mode. No one has more integrity than these two guys. The Dean, Bill Kerlick, and the Grand Poobah, Mark Porter, are here. Gentlemen, we're going to start with some low-hanging fruit today, simply to entertain the host. Touched on it in the boarding house yesterday. As the NFL Combine, I believe, workouts start today and stuff we can watch. I get that. We get to watch people run some 40s. We've got Steve Hellwagon there with bells on, so the reporting will be tight. But I find it interesting that the closer we get to the draft, the more I hear about receivers other than Marvin Harrison. And I find this to be extremely silly. Um, I don't really understand it. During the season, I didn't hear one person claim Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze was as good as Marvin Harrison. And then when you kind of break it down, from a talent perspective, profile perspective physically, pedigree, production, and work ethic. I think he's the safest pick coming out of Ohio State that I can remember. There's only one other guy I think could even be in the mix here, and if you guys bring it up, I'll defer. But Ohio State has become a place where if you are fantastic, you'll be an elite draft pick. Nick Boso, I believe, was the second pick in the draft. Chase Young was the second pick in the draft. Jeffrey Okuda was the third pick in the draft. Marvin Harrison, by all projections, is going to be the third or fourth pick in the draft. I think he's safer. That doesn't mean he's going to be better. But I'm saying safer in that you're going to put all this money out, and look, if the first three picks are quarterbacks, the statistics will tell you one and a half of them are going to fail. So that would mean Marv, to me, would be the more safe pick. I'm not saying I would do that, but in your opinion, is he the safest guy to come out of Ohio State? Bill, given your uh, tenure, we'll go to you first. <laughs> and gray hair and age, right? Um, yeah, he he's a very safe pick, but I got to go with uh, uh, somebody else that I was absolutely 100% convinced that this guy was going to be a star in the NFL. Uh, he is one of the two guys that I've brought up over the years as being the best high school player I've ever seen in Ohio. That'd be the big O, Orlando Pace. I got it right here. I wrote it down just so I yep. could prove that I knew that was he, the other guy I was talking about. Go ahead, He's my man. Um, I've said over and over, I, I, best, I, I, he's the best I've seen in high school ever in the state of Ohio. Um Andy Katzmoyer, I, I have him kind of number two probably on my list, but the big O was incredible, and he was a uh, first-round draft choice and is now in the NFL Hall of Fame. There was no doubt whatsoever in my mind 
he was going to be an absolute star. Mark, do you agree? Yeah. Those two, as I'm cheating right now, looking at another screen of all the draft picks in my okay. state's history, I'm not seeing anyone I can put in front of it jumping off the, you know, I mean, the big, oh, geez, oh, man. And what makes that safe is offensive linemen are safe. I'm looking like at Zeke Elliott and Beanie Wells and thinking, man, those guys were safe. But they're running backs, and you never know with running backs. And that's a position that has that short shelf life and guys come and go. But you, you A.J. Hawk and Ted Ginn and I'm looking at some of these at Malcolm Jenkins and James Laronitis. I mean, there are some great prospects, but the big O and, you know, when you guys say Marvin Harrison's the safest, it, it struck me the other day when they say the Arizona Cardinals want him to be Larry Fitzgerald. Who was safer in the NFL than Larry Fitzgerald? I mean, who was more automatic and more productive and more of an upstanding guy and more of a hard worker? And I mean, those two could be superimposed, you know, as maybe the NFL careers go on. I mean, uh, Harrison has the size of Larry. Uh, it's, Harrison's probably going to grow into that NFL body where he maybe thickens up and, you know, you know, fills out. And not that he's, you know, pretty close to done. I'd say his, you know, uh, development is almost at its max as far as body size, but Larry was a big, thick guy, so I don't want to throw out that comparison without recognizing that they're not exact clones. But that's a pretty good way to say safe, Larry Fitzgerald. Um, you know, not Randy Moss, not, you know, the up and down or the uh, off the field stuff. I mean, so I think when you say safe in, in this year's draft, the only reason he's going fourth is because people have to take quarterbacks. You know, the first non-positional guy, and I think that speaks to a bunch of guys in a – NFL personnel room who just want to say, hey, guys, you want to keep your jobs? Take this guy. And the Cardinals, I don't know if they're screaming for a receiver. I think they could probably use one. But, boy, does that, you know, help Kyler Murray out. And, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I, I would like to see, you know, him maybe go to a different place with, like, a big arm quarterback. But, hey, whatever. You know, that, that's the NFL. They'll figure it out. I'll go on record here. If he goes to the Cardinals, you want to move up in your fantasy draft to get him. First of all, because he's going to be the second biggest or biggest name on the team, so you're going to get them the ball. But, two, he's fantastic at adjusting when the quarterback is scrambling. I mean, Marv's sense of the field is tremendous, and nobody runs around like Kyler Murray and extends plays. So I could imagine that could be very impressive. I thought about Orlando Pace, and I came right down to it, and obviously that was the name I – I, I thought about, and it's the same reason I would give Harrison the edge over Fitzgerald and that he was raised to do this. Okay. Now, Larry Fitzgerald's dad is a sports writer and as a sports writer with children that are athletes, I think that's a fine approach to parenting, but I digress. <laughs> you got to understand if it, everything Marvin's done his whole life has been in the shadow of a Hall of Fame player who was known for his meticulous work ethic. So the learning curve was completely busted. There was no wasted drills. There was no trainer that didn't work. There was no, like, playing on a bad team. He was there from the start. Secondly, um, if you hear anything about Marv, his work ethic is beyond reproach. He's the jugs machine guy and everything like that. And also, Larry Fitzgerald's great, but he was at Pitt. I just think being at Ohio State probably gives you a little bit of an advantage. So, look, when you're talking safest of all time at a place like Ohio State that produces 10 to 15, 20 pros a year, you're definitely talking about small margins. And to me, just reliability-wise, I just think Marv, he's never struggled. Okay, He went in in that, in that bowl game never really having played a ton of minutes and was – I had someone tell me he would have been the first receiver picked in that draft. So I just wanted to make sure that as we go through the combine and talk about sleepers and guys who can do this or that, that we give credit to the guy who every single game last year, the other team, all they tried to do was stop him. And all he did was produce. So um, I will yeah. let my kids buy a Jersey for another team. If it's Marv, I just, just for the heck of it. I'll read a few more of these number one picks off, and let's see yeah. if anybody pops up. I mean, uh, Michael Thomas was a second-round pick, but, boy, he had a pretty good run there. I mean, 
Darren Lee, Taylor, Taylor Decker was one that I've always thought was pretty solid, but yeah. we're not getting in the O pace line there. Eli Apple, Zeke, Joey Bosa, we all knew it was going to be great. Um, Marshawn Lattimore was pretty high up there in safety. You, you kind of knew he had that elite corner skill set. He's kind of lived up to it. The Malik Co- uh, Hooker and Gary Young Connolly, mm-hmm. uh, Curtis Samuels, a second round pick, uh, Denzel Ward. Billy Price, Taekwon Davis, or Taekwon Lewis, I'm sorry, uh, Nick Bosa, Dwayne Haskins, Paris Campbell. Um, I think there- Bosa, you could make the argument that yeah. given his pedigree, it's just that he had been injured enough that there was a there's a little bit of a of an injury factor there, and it's actually proven out he's gotten hurt. I can't remember. I mean, Marvis had some nagging injuries. He had the ankle he got in the Notre Dame game, but he's just been so reliable. I you tell you're talking about guys, though, Dan. You said guys raised to, to do this. Mm-hmm. The Bosa's got to be in there too. No doubt. No. I mean, they were no raised doubt. to do what they are doing. And, no and, doubt. I mean, the I'm, Bosa's are literally built in a Fort Lauderdale lab slash gym, <laughs> owned by you know two first round draft picks at defensive end that they're related to. No, there's no, there's no question that you could, you could match Bosa. The Bosa's would be. The Bosa's would, in terms of safe pick for the NFL, I would say you have the top tier. We'll say Marv and and uh, Opace. I think you can put the Bosa's in the next tier, just because they're technically so sound and so gifted. And the only things would be worried about would be the injuries. And, and as I read these names, I think I'm seeing more like flash and pop and star power out of some names than safety. And not that safety is a bad thing. Safety just means this guy, you can't screw up. I mean, Chase Young, you know, maybe that next I thought year. so. Yeah, like, I mean, as I'm getting to these names, it's hard to – when people ask me these questions, it's hard to encompass 20 years of draft history in my brain. But I'm as I'm popping these names off, I'm sure the listeners and you guys are saying, oh, yeah, there's another tier and another rung. And, it, yeah. So, I mean, even the, the Damon Arnett, Jeff Okuda, J.K. Dobbins is a second rounder. Uh and you kind of think of their NFL career as much as their Ohio State career. Justin Fields and Pete Warner, Josh Myers, uh, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And uh, now we're current with Stroud, Paris Johnson, and Jackson uh, Smith, the Jigba. I so, tell you, he'd be up there, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. I had no doubt in my mind Garrett Wilson was going to be a really good pro. I'm not saying I, uh, I knew he was going to be this good this early. But you want to talk about a guy who came into Ohio State and day one looked like he belonged? That's Garrett Wilson. Uh, fantastic, fantastic player. All right, let's get to uh, some crouton here. Bill, you had a chat and you gave away the kit and the caboodle in there. Lots <laughs> of great information. Um, everybody wants to know the standard. Who will be the next 2025 commitment? And I guess you could hit on that. But I think what people really want to hear about is offensive linemen. And there's a couple that I think are in the Midwest that they're they're after. There's one in the South that they're after, and I'm starting to see crystal balls roll away. Um, Can you bring us up to speed on offensive line recruiting in 2025, specifically Avery Gack? I hope I pronounced that correctly, and Micah DeBose. Well, the the situation with Gack and DeBose, um, you got two guys that are absolutely very interested in Ohio State. I think Gatch has been to Ohio State half dozen times. I, I think something like that. Uh, I know it's a lot. Uh, I just uh, I kind of lose track because he's been there so many times, and that's that's pretty big for an out of state kid, especially a kid from up north, so to speak. Um, now, having said that, Michigan made a really good impression on him uh, this past season. I mean, they really. I if you would have asked me. Uh, Two years ago, I would have said Michigan. I don't know that they were would be the huge factor they are now. Um, he likes Penn State. He's a Michigan State legacy, and they did well with their hire to make a comeback. So I think it's more of a battle than people. A lot of people are just automatically assuming this kid's going to Michigan. Yep, they I think are. It's more of a battle than people are giving Ohio State, Michigan State, Penn State credit for. I'll say that. And I'm not predicting him to Ohio State. I'm just saying it's more of a battle. As far as DeBose, you know, he has told me point blank Ohio State is one of his top two or three choices, and I believe him. 
He's got a grandma that lives in Cleveland and some other relatives up there. He was born and raised in uh, Ohio. Um, he's going to make an official visit to Ohio State. You know, I think it uh, well could come down to one of four schools, Ohio State, Auburn, Alabama, and LSU. I think those are the uh, those those schools are very much in the running for him. Um, but he has said Ohio State on more than one occasion is in his top two or three. If Ohio State could get just one of those two to go with Carter Lowe, there you have your offensive tackle pair uh, that has been so coveted. And by the way, they've told Gatch that he could play any of the five positions on the offensive line. He's that good. Um, probably guard or center, but don't eat, or I'm sorry, probably guard or tackle, but can't even rule out center for him. Mark, there's some video up. Who are we looking at? We're looking at the bows right here, and you can see exactly what Bill's talking about okay. uh, right there. That's <laughs> just, yeah, it, it, I think it's fun to watch. Can you parts. rewind that one? Yeah, we can go back a step there. Um, Everybody should see this thing again. That yeah. was ridiculous. That's <laughs> one of the worst, most painful looking blocks at this one. Yeah. Okay. And that's just going to be an illustration of punch in that lower body power, rooting somebody oh out. God. Helmet comes oh, on. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That, that the word finish comes to mind there, the way these Airborne. guys are. Yep. Uh, I don't give much credit to double teams there because that was a double team, and they obviously annihilated that kid. Uh, but you can see the power right away in just the play. Um, doing this live, I think the fans are going to get a sense of my reaction to different players. Uh, and it's kind of hard to see. We'll try to point him out double here so you can really get an, an eyeball on him. And there's another He's double team. Yeah, where he gets off to the linebacker there. So he's showing off his skills to do. Some of these uh, blocks that are on here, I may not include in my personal breakdown. I like him out in space there. Because um, when I go through some of this stuff, some of it um, I don't give a lot of credit to. Him. Like a scale of a 1 to 10, a double team like that doesn't rate highly, although that was beautiful. Um, I like to see the zone blocks for his feet. There's another block where he's doubling and going up to the linebacker. I love right there how he ran and controlled the player, you know, and he's on balance. Uh, right there, again, you see him on balance digging guys out. And then, again, I'd be critical of the size of that guy he just went against. So, you know, if you're getting into my mind as I'm picking clips to show him off and I was going to remake this film, some of these I would keep, some of them I would put out. Um, that looks like him on defense right there. And, that's a heck of a swim move. So I'll go back and show you that play again if you kind of went away from that. But right. that's another thing I like to see is when a guy's on the other side of the ball, you know, what's he look like? And you're going to see, yeah, some quickness and some get off here right over a guard into the backfield. So you're, you're man amongst boys here. Ooh. Yeah. And if you want to keep going with this, if not, we'll get to the next guy. No, yes. he. I believe he comes in on defense in what they like to call their heavy package. <laughs> Bill, who is the – I saw a crystal ball speak of DeVos, DeBose here. If you already said this, I apologize, but I think he's had a crystal ball rolled for LSU. Yeah, and then I, that's one of the four schools I mentioned. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not sold on him going to LSU. I'm not saying that that can't happen. It could. Like I said, that's one of the four schools I mentioned. I'm just not sold that that's going to happen. Uh, which, yeah. by the way, who would have thought, let's say a year or two yeah. ago, that Ohio State would be doing – this in Alabama, you got Caleb Downs taken away from Alabama, you know, not a recruit, but still you got Naeem offered committing to Ohio state. Now you're talking about Mike, Mike and DeBose is a real possibility. And I know he has an Ohio state or an Ohio connection, but uh, thank you, Nick Saban. I mean, I go almost my entire career without Ohio state pretty much getting a kid from the state of Alabama, you know, heading towards 40 years and all of a sudden, it's it's Ohio State diving into Alabama like crazy. It's becoming shtick because I've used the joke several times, but I enjoy it, so I'll keep doing it. If and when Ohio State wins a national championship this year, uh, Nick Saban's going to be at his beach house or somewhere, and in the mail is going to come a nice like box and open it up, be a nice old championship ring in there as a thank you for giving us not just – Julian Say and Caleb Downs, but Seth McLaughlin wouldn't be here either. I don't think if Nick was still there. So that's three pretty good guys to get in one off season, you know, uh, a starting center with experience in the SEC, arguably the top prep quarterback in the country and arguably the best defensive player, not in the NFL. So thank you, tricky Nick. We do appreciate it. And by the way, 
as Bill mentioned, eliminated Alabama as a recruiting competitor to Ohio State in this rotation, at least at the level they were, which is tremendous. Okay, I'm going to get our second ad in here, and then we'll just start hitting recruiting questions. And It's just lots of fun for everybody. All right. This is one of our best sponsors, and as Dave has told you and I have, we are huge fans of Nuts.com. Do you wish you could go to Willy Wonka's Candy Factory? Well, since that's not exactly possible, let me introduce you to the online version of that, nuts.com. In addition to an amazing selection of nuts, they have tons of classic candies like butterscotch, fudge, and licorice. At the grocery store, you can get pecans, but you don't, but you can't get bourbon pecans, sweet and spicy pecans, pecan brittle or butter toffee pecans. If you're eager to try these, head to nuts.com to see the hundreds of different varieties of nuts they offer. Cashews, almonds, pecans, pistachios, dried mango, crystallized ginger and dates, jelly beans, jawbreakers, root beer barrels, and the like. The variety is vast at nuts.com. Right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping. On orders of $29 or more at nuts.com backslash bucknuts. That's nuts.com backslash bucknuts. All right. Here's an interesting one. Trey McNutt is facing a possible one-game suspension from the OHSAA, the governing body of Ohio High School Athletics, for participating in a Seems like a seven-on-seven or an all-star game of some sort. The rules are in Ohio, you cannot do this. Uh, Those rules are state by state. So he is now facing a one-game suspension. He's not psyched about it. He talked about it to Steve Wolfong. There was a story up there recently. Do you guys have any developed thoughts on that? Could it possibly affect his recruitment? Mark, you can go first. Um. Won't we affect his uh, recruitment at all? Um, his judgment there probably wasn't the clearest. Um, I'll go out on a limb and say that he shouldn't have done it. He knows he shouldn't have done it. It's been a rule that has been in place forever. No other players in the state of Ohio, uh, Ohio have ever done it. So when he did it, I think he knew he was trailblazing this uh, this path. And by his comments, uh, it seems like he's a little feisty and willing to fight it a little bit. And I agree. Uh, you know, uh, in this day and age, all these other states can play in these seven on seven contests and these all star games. And we can debate whether that's healthy or not for high school sports. What's going on with some of these things, kids being lured to these events with whatever they need to do to be lured. And it's coming maybe a pay to play thing. And maybe kids are missing out on opportunities or what what high school coaches in Ohio simply didn't want is this to turn into AAU and to turn into a circus in the off season where your football season's a season, then all of a sudden, as soon as you're done, you're off on some seven on seven thing where one week you're in Alabama playing the next weekend, you're out in California playing and you're on a circuit and, you know, have you lost touch with you know, high school sports and does it affect other sports? Some of the smaller schools worry that if, you know, Ohio has springs football, there goes, you know, baseball teams and track teams. Cause all, you know, So all these arguments lead back to Ohio has had this rule to try to keep it a little cleaner than basketball in other states. Okay, now they have opened up a window from May 15th to July 31st where you can do all the seven on sevens you want. So it's not like they're totally hammering these kids and they have opened up practice day windows. And I'm saying the OSHAA where in the spring where these kids can practice with their football buddies, with coaches there and. You know, we're not going to fall so far behind other states in Ohio, which is the argument. Back to McNutt, I know I, you know, diverge a little bit. He understands that, yeah, he's losing out on competition and losing out on all these things. And the kids should probably be allowed to do this. But I don't know how you're going to make that rule where it doesn't turn into what NIL has turned into. And some of these other things where we almost want to put the genie back in the bottle. So I think Ohio's take on this has been to slowly let the genie out of the bottle. I have young kids that are quarterbacks. They have played flag football at every tournament from East Coast to West Coast. And it's funny, when they get to the older brackets, you know, 14, 15U, no Ohio teams are there. And I just look at all the other kids getting the development and thinking, wow, 
you know, this just these should be Ohio kids playing in these type of tournaments. So I'm on the side of Trey McNutt, even though I was critical of him at the beginning, saying, you know, you shouldn't have done it. You knew there was going to be a, a consequence, but maybe he'll be known as the guy, you know, that trailblazed this for other people. So, you know, it's a shame. And then in some of the all-star game stuff that are padded, that's a whole nother realm of what are you going to go play in a padded event and risk yourself and do some mm-hmm. of that stuff while you're still in your high school career. Uh, so I don't know how far you, we want to bend some of these rules. The seven on sevens, okay, but we might have to stay away from some of that other stuff, or you will just be out of control with all star events. Bill, do you think this affects his recruitment at all? I don't think it affects his recruitment one bit. But um, one thing, you know, Mark said you can debate whether it's right, wrong, or whatever. Um, and I agree with him, and I agree with the, you know, the. Uh, the kids are uh, being pu- penalized to some extent in Ohio by not being able to do this. But one thing I will say is if he is suspended for a game, having been a high school coach in Ohio a long time, if that does happen, I would not bet the ranch that they can beat the rap, so to speak. Uh, I remember when I was coaching, looking at, you know, we would go down and look at all the cases that would go before the Ohio High School Athletic Association appealing. And virtually every single case denied, denied, denied. They almost literally never overturned one of their things. They were virtually all denied. So if it's, if he suspended appeals, I, I, it's going to be really, really unlikely that it's going to get overturned, unfortunately. The OHSSA, like you said, they're like federal prosecutors. Yeah, it's it's like 97%. They're not going to, the rules are pretty ironclad. I'm no legal expert. You can go read the high school rules and kind of follow them. So they're not confusing. Yeah, um, that was my initial reaction when I saw this was, he knew this. This is oh, a, no, he knew. This was a trailblazing thing. This was uh, I'm going to make a statement for everybody else. And from that perspective, you're like, okay, kid, you know that's some you know brass nuts there. But you know, I don't know at, at the end of the day where it's going to get him. And practically apply it. He's already got the offers. If he misses one high school football game, it probably does a disservice to his own team. But is it really going to affect him in the long run? I, I don't know. Uh, this is a good question. This guy has come up, Bill, and you talked about him in your Q&A today. David Sanders, the number one offensive lineman in the country. I don't think they're the leader by any stretch, but you are hearing them in the mix. Now, there's no doubt they, they're recruiting him hard. They stopped at his school um, in January, as you know they were going to. Um, they would love to get him. He's He is tremendous. Um, he has an interest and I, he's been to Ohio state. I, I look for him to get back. I just don't think Ohio state's chances right now are, uh, among the top contenders. I, they're not great. They're a possibility, but if you ask me, absolutely. I would pick the field versus Ohio state at this point. Here's a good question too, from Mello seven Mello and Mika and Sue are heading for the Mount Rushmore of the, uh, posters here bill curlick at bill curlick if you want to follow him on twitter here all of the georgia pods think that georgia will flip javon boggs class of 2025 commitment to ohio state wide receiver out of florida and land jamie french because of their new wide receivers coach what are your feelings in regards to this in Mello's opinion it's laughable (laughs) i um you know, I, Javon Boggs has looked around a little bit. I mean, he, you know, he has visited and all that, and um, you can never rule that out. But how long did we listen to Jeremiah Smith and him going, and how many times on this show did we say, if Brian Hartline and Ryan Day are to Ohio State, you know, I would put my money on him staying there. And I think it's the same thing with Boggs. Um French, he hasn't uh, committed to any – well, he did, but then he decommitted. But he hasn't committed to Ohio State or Georgia, for that matter. So that one's more of a possibility. Uh, but right now, I think Ohio State's biggest challenger for Jamie French is Florida State. 
Who is the new wide receiver coach? Are you familiar with that, or is that something that's off your radar right now? I don't know that much about him, to be honest. Um, I know they have a new wide receivers coach, but um, I haven't really looked into a whole lot about him. Um, I just know that if uh, if I was picking a wide receivers coach, I don't pick somebody other than, than Brian, Hart, or Brian Hartline. I want to, I've said this before too, but in case you miss this, uh, the director of scouting for 24 seven sports, Andrew Ivins is a Florida based individual. He has seen these guys millions of times. And when he was asked about this, his response was, and it's Jimmy French was that the top receiver on the South Florida express speaking of seven on seven teams two years ago, Carnell Tate last year, uh, two, uh, three years ago, Carnell Tate. Two years ago, Jeremiah Smith. Last year, Jamie Fuffa French. So you do the math on that one. All right. Uh, there's a name that comes up, Bill. Offensive lineman Mason Short. Your thoughts? Well, I, I think right now if I had to make a pick on him, it would be to Georgia. Okay. Uh, we mentioned this last show. Uh, you think Georgia wants him? Well, uh, Kirby Smart landed a hell. He was landing on a helicopter uh, on the football field to go see Mason Short, and it did make a big. It did make a big impression on Mason Short. Uh, High State was down there right about the same time, or maybe right before to see him. He likes Ohio State a lot. They're in his Final Four uh, with Georgia, so High State has a shot. But it's going to be really tough to beat Georgia for Mason Short. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Ms. Sanchez has checked in with some thoughts on seven on seven. We have slowed down the seven on seven because of the risk of injury. Uh, I am all over that. And, and, and here's another thing. How much are you getting out of each of these seven on seven sessions? Like it's good to get your reps. I'm, I'm preaching reps to my own personal people, but like, uh, as I see Dietra say that you start to see that some of this stuff is repetitive. Some of it I'm, gaining millimeters now instead of these big leaps in games like you're younger and then you sometimes i think these <laughs> recruits realize i've only been invited here because i'm being taken advantage of i'm only being video invited here. yeah so you're going on twitter or TikTok. I, i'm not a talker or a ticker or a talker but but you, and mark does not like TikTok. <laughs> uh these kids are they love to be marketed but what i don't understand is are we and i've said this before Mark, your your rallying against TikTok has gotten quite extreme. Uh, but what I was saying was that, and, and I said this the other day when we were talking about what's the goal here, and let's just use, you know, Devin Sanchez as the as the example. He's already committed. What what's is, isn't the goal to commit to the best possible school and go there? What's I mean, is he going to commit to the Falcons, Atlanta Falcons? There's nowhere up from there. I don't understand. I mean, you're putting yourself at risk. If you think this is like my argument against AAU for basketball, if you are really getting better, if it is contributing to you being a better varsity player, then you should do it. But if there's no tangible value, if there's no college coach there watching you, you are, there's no point in you being there. Now, and when I say kids fall in love with the process, they fall in love with someone like Bill tweeting out, hey, here was this kid at a, you know, a seven on seven. And then they love the comments and they can't get enough of the comments. And they it's I've, the I've seen how they reply to the fan base. You all love me. Give me some follows. And, you know, if, if you really want me and I'm like, that has nothing to do with this process. This is all fanfare. This is all hype. This is all. And it's all cute and fun. And, and I think people think I'm the get off your lawn guy when I start crying about, oh, I don't like how they do this just for the hits and, you know, the TikTok videos. Um, at some point when you're at the this end of the spectrum and you're going to these Ohio states and you're committed, you don't need to do a lot of that stuff anymore. You need to sharpen your spear and you need to do it safely. And sometimes you need to do it in the dark. You don't need to do it in the public eye for every rep. And you're not going to fool these guys. That's another thing. The, these coaches that are coming to see you, not their first rodeo. They know what's going on. You're not it, tricking, tricking your, uh, someone into giving you a scholarship may have happened like in the eighties. You yeah, can't do that anymore. And that's not going to happen. And if so, by the way, when you get there, 
they will send you packing so quickly in the transfer portal era. You're just really making a mistake for on your own accord. You're causing yourself more work. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. By, by the way, Dan, I did, I was looking in the comments. I mentioned the Kirby smart helicopter thing and, and yeah. somebody mentioned Bill needs a helicopter. So I just wanted to point that out and see well, if for we me, can okay. get that in the budget, please. Hey, let's check. Uh, along I with know, we've had a, that's one, a helicopter would be very helpful. Dan, you said something about like fooling the system. I'm going to give you an example of that. You go into enough of these seven on sevens, you can make a highlight tape of yourself and make yourself look really good because you're going to get matched up against the fourth or fifth DB. There's going to be a game where you're a blowout and they have some backups in and you're going to go catch a touchdown over some unknown corner that's a JV level person. And at the end of the day, you're going to send that tape out and say, oh, I did all this seven on seven and look at me lighting people up. And it's like, anytime you face someone good, you didn't do anything. Guys like me, we're, we're looking at stuff like that where – Go ahead. You know, you can try to fool us. And, and that's just an example of one of the ways. But at the end of the day, we know. Yeah. I mean, it's. I do understand that there was a time when guys toiled in obscurity at small schools and no one knew who anybody was. And a guy would show up at camp and you're like, who's this guy? Those days are so done that I can't. I mean, anyway. I, the closest one recently for that was when Mylon Graham showed up at the Ohio State camp uh, this past June. He didn't have a scholarship offer on the table at the time. And right. he, he shows up and was unbelievable, walks away from Ohio State with an Ohio State offer, and we I know the rest of the story. So that problem was rectified in about five yeah. minutes. See what I I'm saying? That is an incredible story about evaluating and understanding as coaches that, hey, we have the times, we have whatever. We don't care if – if Miami of Ohio hasn't even offered yet, we're going to do it. No, no, no. We're going to take the leap of faith. Uh, no one else has. And that for Ohio State to do that, that tells you how great well, they are. Saw that, Mark yeah. and I saw on that day, it was an absolutely no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, but Hardline probably doesn't get enough. I mean, he gets credit for being like, you know, a, a gregarious salesman and stuff and getting the NFL. He probably hasn't gotten enough credit, credit excuse me, as a talent evaluator early on. Because he's he's you know he's selecting from the world and elsewhere, man. He's not starting in Ohio, you know what I mean? And he, the idea that he's got a thing whittled down, very impressive. All right, last question, and we're not we'll get to Mason short next time. This guy I want to talk about Bill because I saw something on him yesterday. Any truth to the rumors of Ohio State building momentum with LSU commitment to Corey and Moore? I believe he goes to Duncanville in. Texas, which is like playing for a college team in high school, number one wide receiver in the country. He did say uh, some nice things about Ohio State. Is that just a guy wanting to have Ohio State on his ledger, or do you think they're really in the mix? I think it's somewhere in between. I think that uh, he is committed, as as we know, to LSU. He also, as you mentioned, Dan, referred to uh, – he said he's kind of uh, – opening his recruitment up a little bit with Ohio State back in the running. Um, so, yeah, you know, he, he is expressing an interest again in Ohio State. Now, having said that, um, he's got some other visits scheduled. He doesn't have anything scheduled to Ohio State right now. So I think um, you got to get him on campus here before uh, you get too excited about that. Getting too excited, Mark. I'm not going to post that again. You're going to get too excited in here. Yeah. Last question. I mean, last comment goes to Dietrich. Shocker. What you do in a T-shirt is not the same as doing yeah. it in pads. Amen. Shirt warriors. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. Um, I think we'll just leave it at that. Football is played in pads. As you watch the Combine this weekend and one of your favorite players or a guy you loved doesn't run the fastest 40 – doesn't look the cleanest out of his brakes. Go throw the tape on. Um, as a as a father of basketball players, basketball requires to me a year round commitment to skill and stuff. Football, about eighty percent of it is your son willing to show up and knock the crap out of somebody. So uh, that can't be taught. Um, Got to have pads on. All right, guys, that was a good show. Great uh, contributions from the Peanut Gallery, as always. Um, great contributions from the Dean and the Grand Poobah. Have a good one.
Have a good one, Bucknutters.